Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Robinhood's Stock Market Watchlist uh, meeting. And uh, today is March 13th, it is Sunday. Uh, my name is Carlos. I am the uh, creator of the group and administrator. Um, this is our live weekly meeting. And uh, today we're going to go over a little bit of some educational information and then we'll dive into uh, to see what this week is going to look like we'll go over some of the really most important things that are going to happen that way we're we'll always be ready for them but uh, uh again this is a live meeting so there are um there are uh members uh in this uh meetings that will maybe at, uh, ask some questions and everything um However, there are many different types of investors and, and, and traders. There are long-term investors that'll buy today and they'll hold, you know, f maybe forever or maybe for, for years. Uh, sometimes those long-term investors are uh, 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 like to buy stocks that pay dividends every three months. So not only are you holding a, in a stock that's appreciating, but it's also paying you a dividend every three months. So uh, then you have your short-term traders that'll maybe uh, buy now and maybe sell later on uh, uh, later this year, like in the fall. Um, and, uh, uh, and then you have your um, you know swing traders that'll buy today, sell tomorrow, or, or sell next week or a couple weeks. And then you have your day traders that'll buy today, sell today. Uh, however, there's something that's extremely important that they all have to utilize, and that is. Uh, something called moving averages and if it's something that you're not using now um, we're going to talk about it because that's ultimately one of the foundations to our strategy no matter what type of investor and uh, or trader that that you are so i'm going to pull up a video here really quick that we can kind of uh, watch it's only a couple minutes long uh, and uh, but it's really going to explain what moving averages is and and how to utilize it and then we'll switch over to a stock market platform uh, that way i can show you how to configure it for uh, your own platform based on your type of strategy or uh, type of investing and trading uh, give me one moment while i pull that up here for you The moving average is one of the most commonly used technical indicators. If you've spent even a little time looking at price charts, you will have noticed that most often the price of an instrument will move up and down. In fast moving markets, you may find that the price may be surging up only to plummet moments later before surging up again, increasing the potential for false signals. The moving average can help filter out the noise from random price movements and smooth it out in order to see the average value. Moving averages are used to identify trends and confirm reversals. When the price is above the moving average line, we consider the instrument to be in an uptrend. Conversely, if the price is below the moving average line, we consider it to be in a downtrend. The breaking of the moving average line usually implies a trend reversal. Moving averages are also used to identify areas of support and resistance. Many traders will consider the moving average line as a support and resistance level indicator and base trades on it. So traders will check to see whether the price is going towards the moving average and see whether it will bounce back from it or break it as with regular support and resistance level. Oftentimes, the price of an instrument will find support at the moving average line when the trend is up and will find resistance at the moving average line when the trend is down. So moving averages will tell you whether an instrument is trending up, down or if it's ranging. It can tell you if a trend is still in motion and whether it is reversing or losing momentum. Have in mind that a moving average is based on past prices and is known as a lagging indicator. Therefore, it will not warn you in advance, but it will confirm when a trend change has taken place. At the most basic level, when the price crosses up and over the moving average, traders take this as a signal to buy. When it crosses down under the moving average line, they consider it a signal to sell. Let's take a look at the types of moving averages. There are three main types, simple, weighted and exponential. We will discuss the simple moving average or SMA first and show you how it's calculated so that you can adjust it according to the given market circumstance. 
So if you wanted to plot a 10 day simple moving average, you would add the closing prices of the last 10 days and divide by 10. This calculation gives equal weight to each day. It's called a moving average as the oldest price is dropped each time a new period becomes available. In this way, ensuring that the average is based only on the last X number of periods, in our example for the last 10 days. Have in mind that the longer the simple moving average period, the more it lags and the slower it is to react to the most recent price movement. And this brings us to its downside. As equal weight is given to all periods considered in the calculation, the simple moving average is slower to respond to rapid price changes that might prove to be important. So how can you counter this? With another type of moving average, either a weighted or an exponential moving average. The weighted and exponential moving averages are calculated differently from one another, but both types give more weight to recent periods and thus more emphasis on what traders are doing at the moment. So as a result, weighted and exponential moving averages respond faster to price action by distributing more weight to recent periods and less to older periods. They reflect a quicker shift in sentiment, which can be due to changes in supply and demand or important news events that impact the traded instrument. To illustrate what we mean, if you were to plot an exponential moving average and a simple moving average on a chart, you will see that the exponential moving average is closer to the current price than the simple moving average. Apart from the type of moving average, you also have to decide on the time period. This will largely depend on the type of trend you are analyzing. Here are some guidelines for commonly used time periods. 10 to 20 for short-term trends, 50 for mid-term, and 200 for long-term trends are typically used. When and how should you use moving averages? Deciding which moving average to use in the time period will depend largely on your objective. Use exponential moving averages for shorter time frames or if you're analyzing a fast moving market as you'd have more emphasis on the latest prices. Use simple moving averages if you are planning on holding a position for a longer period of time as the exponential moving average might be too sensitive and give false signals. You should also use simple moving averages if you'd just like to filter out the noise from random price fluctuations to determine the overall market direction. Thank you for watching this tutorial on moving averages. Our next video will focus on how to trade using moving averages. All right, let's uh, switch over to the uh, stock market platform. Now I use Weeble. Weeble is a free uh, trading platform, just like Robinhood. Uh, it is, they also have a desktop version, so you can download to your Surface Pro or your laptop or desktop. But you don't even have to sign into it if, if you don't want to. You can still uh, uh, you know, use a, a lot of the, uh, the, the graph features. Um, so, uh, I have pulled up Apple uh, that we'll use as an example. Uh, now I use the EMA uh, uh, chart as the video had explained. There's a couple different types of moving averages. Now the differences between these types is that some of them will move uh, more uh, faster or slower to the price changes, uh, meaning the reaction. So the uh, moving averages, for example, I use EMA because it reacts faster to the price changes. So that way I can uh, react uh, quicker um, and, uh, and adjust things and, and see if I need to sell or, or, or buy uh, sooner than later. But it depends on your type of strategy because I'm more of a day trader, swing trader. You may be more of a short term or long term trader. Uh, you're not going to want the EMA. You're going to want more of the SMA or the MA uh, regular moving averages because those aren't going to move uh, as reactive to the price changes. So that way you're not getting as many buying and selling signals. If you get too many, that can be considered as a false signal because it may provide a sell signal and then instantly recover and, and keep trending up and then uh you and then you would have to sell and then buy again and then you may not always do that because you may have missed the opportunity or or maybe the price is higher than what you sold it at you don't want to you know you don't really want to buy higher than what you sold it at but then it just keeps going uh, so i mean there's just many different you know s scenarios and everything so uh so this is our daily graph so every notch is 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 one day 
Sorry, and so uh, we can look and see that the moving averages, well, we see that our main price line is right here. And then the three moving average lines is what I use because we kind of have a like a, a high risk, medium risk and a low risk uh, type of an indication uh, in, in a way uh, when it comes to providing you a buying and selling signal. Your normal sell signal is when the price line cuts through all three moving average lines and the uh, and then it, provi it provides a crossover is your last and, and final uh, uh, signal. Now you can utilize the MACD chart uh, on the bottom. Now both of these, your moving average and your MACD are the two most commonly used uh, graphs and charts by professional traders and investors. And so uh, again, if, if you haven't yet started using that yet, uh, it's time to start. The, the, to, and able to get different results, you have to try something different. And if you haven't tried this, you, you gotta. This is one of your, uh, your tools that you need to put under your tool belt. And so, uh, and so as the price you know, comes down, and you can see the MACD, what, and what these are are two moving average lines. We don't have a price line here. We have two moving average lines that kind of react a little differently, but we still have that same concept where we have that crossover right there. Now the colored bars down below represent a gap distance between the two moving average lines. So when they cross over, then they, the color bars change and you'll start to notice the, uh, the, the the gap distance. So the bigger the bar, the more, you know, volatile, you know, the stock is and the more uh, of an uptrend that it is. But it, it's trying to tell you now, hey, you know, the stock is most likely going to change its trending direction. So we got to listen to it. And, and it was kind of doing it prematurely. And, and, and that's why we got to listen to it. But and able to listen to it, we have to understand its communication of how it's communicating with us. And so that's why it's really important. Just like learning a new language or, or learning your first language when you're a child, you know, we have to be able to understand uh, the information that we're given. And so that's basically what it's saying. It's saying, you know, keep watching because you know it's about to change its trending direction and it pretty much did right here and you can notice that we really have some big gap bars in our MACD and and it's definitely showing us right here you know it, it get ready to sell because it's providing us a sell signal it definitely does right here and just drops uh pretty you know pretty hard uh right here and uh and then it quickly provides you know uh, another buy signal uh, and then, but again, th this is where you can really change and modify your charts. That way you're not getting as many buying and selling signals. Um, you know, when it comes to, um, when you're usually, when you're looking at the daily chart, that's usually for, um, uh, short term and, and long term traders, uh, more or less your day traders and swing traders are going to be using your one minute and, or, uh, the five minute chart. Um, uh, and, and usually the Robin hood graph which is just a single line is usually based off of your five minute chart so you don't get that fine detail from your uh your, your one minute chart so looking at the five minute chart on for friday uh last friday uh, we can see that apple just had a, a trending down and so if you're in the stock options or or you're thinking about getting into stock options that's now where we can bet against the stock we can bet that the stock will go down and as it does we can profit from it tremendously with a, 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 a crazy amount of leverage and so uh, as the stock begins to drop we we, we we can bet against it or if you haven't bought any yet that's when you can kind of get into here because then it begins to continue to drop we can kind of see that in the macd as well but uh hopefully maybe you got in a little early and then uh but it, and just wait for that that signal that transitional signal which was right down here so if you bought a put there and, and and then and then right here is your transitional signal letting you know that it's getting ready to change its trending direction and when it tells you that it, it, we don't know how long or how far it's going to go until further notice and we can kind of you can kind of see that this is where you would have uh, sold your put maybe buy a call 
and uh, and then ride it up until further notice. You can see that uh, it basically was kind of communicating with us prematurely right in here. And then so if we did uh, sell uh, and maybe bought the put, uh, call, we can then uh, profit a little bit from uh, the call, but then it would have sold, but then it basically would have told us here, hey, you know, get ready to, you know, uh, sell because, you know, it's getting ready to trend down uh, most likely uh, for the rest of the day. And, and it did. So uh, you can always get back uh, or sell a call, buy the put back and then sell right before or, or whatever, whatever your, your strategy is. But there, it's just really, really important to utilize the moving averages uh, uh, accordingly to your style in investing and, and trading. And one of the ways you can do that, and this is very similar to many other programs, uh, normally when you hover over your moving average uh, indicator, um, uh, you just, there's a little gearbox that'll appear and you just click on that. And that's where you can really modify your main chart so that we can pick either the regular moving average or your exponential moving average. And uh, you have your length uh, right over here. And, and, and the, the, these times represent, well, it depends on what chart that you have it on. So for example, if we have it on our daily chart, then this will represent a five day trading period or one week. Then you have a 10 day trading period or a two week moving average and then a 20 day trading period or four week or a one month moving average. Now, if you're more into a long term investing, you're going to want to probably use the, the 30 uh, uh, trading day, 60 and the 120 uh, trading day. Uh, period, or if you're more in the short term, probably more of the, of the 20, 30, and and the 60. Uh, now you can change it accordingly to you know whatever that you want to do, but then you can click on style, and this is where you can pick and choose which one, and you can change the color according to your preference. Now, if you're more uh, a short-term trader, like I said, you can we can change it to the 20, 30, and the 60, and then notice how uh, we get less buying and selling signals. And so just like uh, that little area here, it never provided a full on sell signal. It basically said, just, you know, keep holding uh, up until, you know, this point. Now it's saying, you know, uh, time to get out, you know, until further notice. And so, uh, but, you know, you, you just have to really adjust and fine tune a lot of these settings uh, to your style of investing in and trading. Now, uh, you can also change the look and the appearance to this just by also right clicking on it uh, or, or uh, clicking on, I think it's another uh, icon on the mobile application. And then you have your line style. Uh, you'll, a lot of times you'll see people with candles, which show a lot of, you know, interesting information uh, uh, such as like price, high points, low points, things like that, but also volume. But we have the volume bars down here as well. So I don't really need to repeat the, this information. Plus I need to see clarity. I need to see what's going on between the price line and the moving average lines. And this is distorted. So that's why I don't use candles. So I, I, I go back to the line styles and, and, and click on the lines. That way I can exactly see with absolute clarity of what's going on. And that way I can, I can base my trades off of these uh, trading signals. So we're gonna go back to the second video. It's only a couple minutes long and then I'll answer any questions that you guys may have because it's important that all of this makes sense. So give me one moment while I pull that next video up. In the tutorial, we will discuss how to use moving averages to identify the direction of a trend, how they can be used to enter and exit a trade, and finally, how to trade moving average crossovers. To determine the direction of a trend using a moving average, you must take into account the set time period. We touched on this briefly in the last video where we showed you the most commonly used time periods when analyzing short-term, mid-term and long-term trends. But why is it important to be aware of the time period of the moving average? In this chart, when we place a 20 period simple moving average by clicking the indicator icon, 
and setting the time period to 20. We can clearly see that it indicates an uptrend. Yet when we place a 60 period simple moving average in the same way, we see that it shows the price in a range with no clear upward or downward trend. The difference in the direction of the trend portrayed by the moving average is due to the time period. Shorter period moving averages are faster at generating signals and changes in the price of the instrument will be reflected more quickly. The longer period moving average will react to price changes much more slowly but will generally provide more reliable trading signals. As a trader, moving averages will help you decide which way to trade by looking at whether the price is above or below the moving average line. In this chart, the price is above the moving average line and acts as support. You could buy and enter a long position when the price pulls back to the moving average line. You could then place your stop loss underneath the moving average. Here we can see the opposite. The price is below the moving average and acts as resistance. You could then enter a sell order when the price retraces to the moving average line and place your stop loss above the moving average. The interesting thing about moving averages is that they can be used alone or in combination with other moving averages. So when you place two moving averages on one chart with different periods reflecting a short term and a longer term trend in price, you have the opportunity to trade moving average crossovers. They can be used to determine when a trend has changed direction. Let's show you what we mean. On a daily chart for the pound US dollar, we will now place a 10 period simple moving average and a 20 period simple moving average. When a shorter period moving average crosses above a longer period moving average, it can signal that the trend is changing direction to the upside and it may be a good time to buy. When a shorter period moving average crosses below a longer period moving average, this is considered bearish, a signal that the trend may be changing towards the downside and it may be a good time to sell. No matter which two time periods you use, this principle will remain the same. To recap, a moving average is a lagging indicator that can help filter out the noise from random price movements to see the average value. It can help identify the trend direction, determine support and resistance levels, and can help confirm a trend reversal when looking at moving average crossovers. It is important to understand the differences between the types of moving averages and how to tailor the time period to best fit the trend being followed in order to gain the maximum benefit from this indicator. Thank you for watching this tutorial on moving averages. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our blog for additional information. If you have any questions about the strategy, please let us know in the comments section and we will get back to you. We wish you successful trading with Trading212. Alright, um, get out of there and let's go back to anybody have any questions regarding moving averages everything makes sense let's go back to is there i have a question about it when you're looking at the chart as it's actually happening it's it's just so different than looking at it in these lessons yes yeah definitely can especially during the uh, volatility and and a lot of times when we're when we have the day open we're looking at the one minute chart because the first hour and the last hour of every day has the most volatility so that's uh, and then after the the first hour usually we'll want to default to the the five minute chart smooth everything out because then the the market kind of or we, you can split it up. You, you can with the uh, with these types of applications, you, you can split screens and uh, and and see multiple views. Uh, let's go here. Let's go there. But the first, uh, especially after opening, yeah, we always want to. Uh, we always want to uh, look at the the one minute, but yeah, it, it, you can definitely notice. I mean, it's a huge difference, uh, you know, between the two. Let me get back here, um, and that's why again, you just really want to 
really compare the two because you want all the stars to be aligned. If, if, if one's saying one thing, but then the other side's saying a, a, another, then then stay out. You know, you, you really want, you know, you, you definitely you definitely want a, a good confirmation of, of uh, its trending direction. And that's why a lot of times uh, it, it takes the right stock. Uh, and that's why Apple is, or SPY is one of the most highly traded ones because it doesn't move very much. It moves like 1%, 2% uh, at a time. And so the movements are much more predictable uh, versus a, a penny stock or, or certain other volatile stocks that can sometimes surge 10% or plunge 10%. Uh, you know, and, and and I mean, it can go straight up or straight down. Sometimes those are a lot harder to 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 manage versus something like this. Now, even though Apple may move one or two percent at a time, but in the options world, that could be a twenty or forty percent movement per one percent. Just depends on the expiration date that you have selected. But yeah, it's definitely extremely important to really utilize this. Um, anybody else have any questions? Everything makes sense. Um, then, uh, other than that, we'll move on to um, uh, 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 planning ahead. Uh, you can voice chat or you can chat in the chat room. I just want to make sure everybody's good. I have a question, Mr. Carlos. Sure. Uh, I do have a question. Uh, question is like, uh, when you're gonna buy the option? So, you just tell me that I have to use the one minute chart or five minute chart. But when you see the one minute chart, is a different uh, result than five minutes chart. So because five minutes is like you know way more behind than one minute. One minute is like more more clear picture. But both two difference is actually make me confused. Should I get buy this one right now or should I stay away from this now? So that's what my question is. Thank you. Yeah, and that's why we really want to focus on the trending directions. But also, as we get through the, this meeting, we're going to show you how to plan ahead. That way we know uh, what the uh, days are going to be like. Because so, so look at Apple, you know, like right here, you know, w one of the reasons why this happened was, be, you know, th this, this next drop was because of the, uh, the the little press conference that we had. You know, Biden had came out and he had a little talk and everything. Well, it was scheduled. Everything is scheduled for the week, so we know what's going to happen and and what to kind of expect. So uh, when we're looking. At at after opening, we can see that, you know, especially right before opening, we we already see there, there's a downtrend direction. All, the, the the price line is below the the three moving average lines. It, it's confirmed. As we're using the one minute chart, we and if you're not holding, uh, or maybe you just bought a put, or maybe you're uh, holding puts from the previous day, or maybe you're straddling. So uh, either way. You, you continue to hold whatever that it is until further notice. So you continue to hold pretty much at, at this point well, has been almost an hour. We're like 45 minutes. Now, the morning kind of has these little weird segments. We have, we, have a, we have a 15 minute segment, which is kind of this area here where uh, it, it kind of does the opposite after 15 minutes and then for another you know few minutes or whatever. But uh, and then we have that one hour little period. It could be 45 minutes, sometimes an hour and 15 minutes. And that's where we see uh, that the uh, it's just losing a little bit of uh, momentum right here. But it's basically provided us that uh, that basically, you know, it's time to sell your put or, or maybe buy a call, whatever. But we have to at that point, it, it's it's right after an hour now. So it, we, we have to make sure we're aware of everything that's scheduled for the day. Uh, that means press conferences, economic reports, because all of those have a huge impact on the entire stock market system. And and if you, you just have to be aware of it because it's just part of the, the, the game, it's just part of the system. And if, if you're not tuned into that stuff, uh, that's when things happen and, and you feel like you're out of the loop. You're like, what just happened? Everything just tanked or everything just surged. And, and, and one of the things is, is, is it's important to know what's going to happen before it happens. 
And so, uh, and, and we knew that this was going to happen. And that's why I posted in, in the uh, in the chat room, hey, you know, it, it, watch for this press conference because things are about to get really, really volatile. Uh, and, and it did. And so a lot of times, you know, things could come up, but, you know, they could say things that uh, basically there wasn't any good news and there wasn't any bad news. The market was looking for, you know, some kind of you know good news to kind of you know keep the momentum going but because there wasn't any bad news or good news we were on a friday uh, and, and right before the end of the week and there's all kinds of bad things that can happen throughout the weekend usually investors don't like to hold uh, just because of that so the market just decided just to continue to uh, trend downwards and so you know it, it, the stock market is kind of like a battlefield. You know, we have to make sure that, you know, uh, that we just have all of our strategies in, in place. We're aware of, of what's going to happen. That way we can always make preemptive uh, strikes. And, uh, and and again, that's what's going to lead us to the uh, the next thing is how to plan our, our week ahead uh, by knowing what's going to happen before it happens. And so we're going to go into a uh, website here. I'm going to pull it up here for you. Um, that is, um, and, and I've looked at many different websites for, uh, well, one of the things that the pro traders say is follow the money. And so when I really started to dive into this many, many years ago, uh, I, I needed to, I wanted to learn everything, what makes it work, what makes it tick. And, and I just, I just had to keep following the money, where it goes and, or, or, or uh, you know, how things move and, and, and everything. And I, uh, I, I, I found the fact that the economic reports have one of the most biggest impacts on the entire stock market system next to uh, inter international issues that, that can affect our economy. And so, uh, and finding a lot of this information was very difficult, but I came across a website and it's a free website called investing.com. It's also an application you can download to your uh, your mobile device. Now, uh, we're going to as we're talking about the economic calendar, so we'll have to click on that, uh, whether you're on the website or if you're on the application, it's a little calendar icon on the bottom middle of, of your screen. You'll need to click on that and you may see uh, different types of calendars like economic calendar, earnings calendar, holidays, dividends, yada, yada. Uh, but you'll want the economic calendar. Now, when we're looking at this um, on the website, it's going to default to um, uh, the Eastern time. But if you're looking at it on your mobile device, it's going to be more in your time zone. So you have to be aware of these times and and uh, or time zones, um, and and that way you know you know when things are about to happen. So w when we're here, we got to click on the filters uh, icon. Uh, if you're on the uh, mobile device, it'd be a little uh, funnel icon. We need to clear everything. There's only two things that we need to uh, to, to select, and one of them is the United States. And then under importance, we need to, you'll see there's a one star, two stars, and a three stars. You wanna put a check mark under three stars because what we're wanting it to do is to provide us all the most important things that'll have the biggest impact on the United States stock market. Then click apply. Uh, we'll click on uh, this week. That way we can see everything that's scheduled to happen this week. And this week is extremely busy with a lot of stuff. When there's a lot of stuff, that means that means there's, there's gonna be a lot of volatility, uh, crazy volatility because we got some Fed meetings even, even coming up. So um, uh, typically it's not this busy. Um, sometimes it's not as busy, but that's why it's really important that we look at this regularly, not only just on the weekends, but also throughout the week, because sometimes things could change. Sometimes they may throw in something new or maybe they don't have a forecast. And so, uh, meaning what they predict that the results might be. So we're, we're, we'll go through this uh, one by one, that way, you know, we're, we're aware of what's gonna happen, but also that way you can also learn uh, how to do this type of due diligence. Now, we can see that there's nothing on Monday. So Monday, you know, we, we come into Monday, uh, there's, you know, it's just kind of wait and see what's gonna happen. You know, we've got, a, you know, the uh, markets just kind of, kind of figure itself out. It could be bullish, it, it could be bearish, uh, you know, but ultimately, 
because of this this Russian Ukrainian uh, invasion war and, and whatnot, uh, the market is ultimately ultimately looking for um, a lower risk for World War Three. So, if the risk of a World War Three or or a war outside of Ukraine is reduced, then uh, then our bearish characteristics will be reduced. So. Um, However, with I think some of this morning's news, we've seen I think our first American journalist that had died, and I think there's a few others that have been injured. So that may spook investors. So we may see a little bit of red uh, during our U.S. futures this evening, as well as uh, during pre-market. So um, we just have to wait and see and, and to be determined. But ultimately, that's kind of what's going to drive our, 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 our pre-market. And so, but typically um, in, investors love to come back uh, from the weekend to, to get ready to, to invest and to pump up the market. And so usually Mondays can be a, a pretty green day, but um, but we're, we're still in the, in the, uh, uh, the bullish season or the bearish season where uh, things are, are trending down. However, this week is going to be uh, anticipated to be one, uh, basically the last week of our bearish season because of how busy uh, and, and bearish things are going to look. But also Friday is uh, Triple Witching Day, which I don't know if you've heard that term uh, before, but Triple Witching Day only happens four times per year. So that's rare. So the more rare certain events take place with the stock market, the more volatile that can be, just like economic reports. Uh, if, you, if we're looking at a yearly economic report, it's going to be more volatile. If it's a quarterly economic report, it's still going to be quite volatile. Uh, if it's a monthly uh, economic report, it's going to be you know volatile. But and then if it's a weekly, it's not going to be as volatile. And so, but it, it's still you know what, what we're seeing here is really really important. But uh, so triple witching day on on Friday, March 18th. Uh, is where a lot of things expire, options, ETFs, yada, yada. And so what when things expire, it just forces uh, traders to sell. When there's a lot of selling activity, what happens? Things just tend to trend downwards. So not only do we have that, uh, do uh, you know that that is caused by that organically but also we have a friday which is another you know the last day of the week going into the weekend uh, where there's a lot of uncertainty where we can get spooked uh and, and so friday you know is it, it's kind of like a trifecta you know it, it it's going to be extremely bearish uh i would call it like the black friday of the stock market because stocks are going to be at a discount but uh as we get past this part, uh, as we're, we're ending, uh, we're kind of finalizing the end of our first quarter, uh, the, the, the bearish season, um, and, and, and that way we can now begin to uh, go into transition into the spring season and the, the second quarter, which is the transitional period between our bearish season, our bearish characteristics, to the bullish season and with the bullish characteristics. So a lot of times we'll see within the first quarter of the bearish season, we'll see a lot of days where the days open in the red and they'll close in the red. The transitional period, we'll kind of see a 50-50 where we may see the uh, the the, the uh, morning open in the red, but it closes in the green. Uh, or maybe it opens in the green and it closes in the red. Uh, as we get closer through the second season, we'll see more, uh, more um, opening in the green and closing in the green, especially during the uh, summertime, where then now that's the majority, like almost four days out of, uh, out of the, the week, you know, it's, it's open in the green, close in the green. It just works like that, like, like clockwork. And so, uh, God, there's just so much to talk about. Uh, so going in, going back to Monday. So again, Monday is to be determined. Uh, Tuesday and so we have and again like I said the, the time is really really important so in the Eastern time the stock market opens at 930 in the morning so this economic report is going to be released two hours before the stock market opens so that means that Tuesday morning is going to be or the pre-market is going to be highly affected by this 
And this is a PPI report, which is which uh, uh, MOM means for uh, month over month for the month of February. Now, if you're not sure what PPI means, I don't blame you. I didn't know at first either, but feel free to click on it. It'll tell you everything you need to know. So the PPI uh, means that it's the producer price index for the United States. If you scroll down below, it'll tell you in a little small paragraph of what that is and how it will affect the stock market. So, and this says that the, the producer price index measures the change in the price of goods sold by the manufacturers. It is a leading indicator of a consumer price inflation, which accounts for the majority of overall inflation. A higher than expected reading should be taken as a positive or bullish for the US dollar, which also affects the stock market, while a lower than expected reading should be taken as a negative or bearish for the US dollar, which affects the stock market. And so um, that's why it's really, really important to know this stuff. And when you're looking at this regularly on a daily basis, you'll just start to memorize it. Not only memorize what this stuff is, but you'll also memorize uh, what some of the previous forecasts were. However, for uh, for January, the previous report was was one and a half. Now it's forecast for, for this next coming report to be at 0.9%. So, if the actual report comes on at exactly this moment, if it's less than the forecast, then we got to expect bearish characteristics. That means the stock in the stock market isn't going to quite react instantly. It takes a little while because as soon as this information is released, you're getting it as soon as the news companies are getting it. The news companies get it. It takes time for them to create an article. It takes time for them to blast it out. By then, it could it could have been 30 minutes. It could have taken an hour for you to have gotten this information. But now you could get it at, at the same exact second that it's released. At, at the same time, the news companies get it. That puts you ahead because now you, you get the same information that when they get it. You can react much, much quicker, giving you a huge advantage. But a lot of times this stuff may take 30 minutes to an hour for the stock market to, to uh, react because that's kind of the reaction time that a lot of investors have because they're getting these notifications on their phone or maybe on the news, maybe uh, Yahoo Finance is finally talking about it or whatever. It takes time for them to process that and then to figure out how they're gonna promote that. And so we don't need them. We All we need is where they're getting the information from. That way we can decide what we need to do at the time it needs to be done. And so if the results come back at 1.0, uh, we're good. If it comes back at 1.0 or, or, or higher, uh, then we're even better. So that means that we could expect even maybe a, 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 a better bullish uh, Tuesday for the rest of the day. So it just depends on on what's going on. So that way we can kind of determine what the rest of the day is gonna be like. We can kind of start watching the moving averages and seeing what trending direction that it's going most likely, you know, uh, if it does really good. And this is, in, this, we're talking about inflation. I mean, who are we kidding? Inflation is huge right now. Uh, th these numbers are most likely going to be uh, pretty bullish, uh, I would anticipate. So. If Monday comes back uh, bearish, you know, maybe in the red, you know, we could see Tuesday in the green. And then uh, going into Wednesday, then we have two economic reports that are scheduled to be released during pre-market. Now, these are the, are the retail uh, sales. And there's two different ones. You have core retail sales and, and regular retail sales. Now, the core retail sales are basically the sales that measures the change in the total value of sales at the retail level in the United States, excluding uh, automobiles, it is an important indicator of the consumer spending that is considered as a pace indicator for the United States economy. Now, versus the regular retail sales, this is the retail sales measures the change in the total value of sales at the retail level. It is, an, it is uh, the most foremost uh, indicator of the consumer spending, which accounts for the majority of the overall ec economic activity. And so um, 
But most reports, we need the reports to come back higher. There are typically there's there's a couple reports that we need lower, and that would be like crude oil inventories. If if these or uh, 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 unemployment, which would be our uh, initial jobless claims, or even the interest rate, you know these three things we need lower. If they're lower, then that means bullish characteristics. That's a positive thing. If these things are higher, uh, then that is bearish. That means then things will begin to keep trending downwards. And so, uh, but let's go back to the retail, the core retail sales month over month to the month of February. So the previous month, and that would be for January was 3.3%. Now January is, uh, is still a good spending uh, month, just like uh, December, because with January, we have a lot of people that, that have gift cards uh, from the holidays from December and they're, they're you know they're spending you know money on on that and, and, and whatnot and they're they're or they're doing exchanges or returns and so there's just still a lot of you know retail uh, sales activity uh, for that month and then we go into February February you know isn't so much it used to be when when people would be able to do their their tax returns in January uh, sometimes they would get their income tax returns a little sooner. And then sometimes February's used to be really good months, but not so much uh, um, or, uh, anymore um, because things are a lot more extended out and delayed and, and whatnot. So uh, and so, um, yeah. So February just does not look good. We can see that the forecast is definitely much lower than the previous. So uh, they may be setting the bar pretty low, you know, just trying to prevent it from being as bearish, but. Uh, but um, it, it just doesn't look good. I mean, we're going through a shortage. I mean, we're going through inflation. So retail sales, you know, in, in general, I think are going to be down. Uh, so I, I, to me, I, I don't have a good feeling about this. I have very bearish uh, feeling that uh, that this isn't going to look good. Um, so, uh, but to be determined, we'll really have to see. And, and, and that's why we got to wait and, and watch, but just know that uh, it, these two mornings are going to be very volatile, which is also a great ingredient for straddling. If you're a stock, if you're into stock options, we can buy both calls and puts. Uh, and I usually buy uh, calls and puts five minutes before the stock market closes. Uh, and, and the reason why I'll do that because you know I, I try to avoid some of the middle of the day uh, activity, or uh, uh, because a lot of times it just kind of ranges. And, and, and if you're if you're holding on to calls and puts, and, and the stock just ranges flat, it's not really moving anywhere. Uh, you're going to suffer time decay and time depreciation. And so uh, to avoid that, I just buy five, maybe you know five ten minutes before the stock market closes, secure my calls and puts really quick and so that way I'm not suffering any time decay time depreciation going into the next morning and we have a knowing that it's going to be very volatile things are going to be up or down uh, pretty significantly and that is a, a very good ingredient for straddling especially for using a very you know the most recent expiration date means it's going to be more volatile anyways so that's another uh, key uh, point to use uh, straddling is to use the uh, the soonest expiration date that way uh, it's, it's it's going to be the most volatile uh, uh, opportunities on on both parts and again I always tell uh, you guys that you can only lose what you put on the one side but you, your gains on the other side are potentially unlimited so that means you, you can only lose 100 percent so you can't lose more than what you put into it and on the other side you can gain 100 percent you can gain 200 percent you can gain over a thousand percent on one side so if you let's say for example you put a thousand dollars on calls and a thousand dollars on puts so your total investment is is two thousand dollars if you lose 100 percent on one so you just lost a thousand dollars on that one but then on the other one let's say you gain 200 percent because whatever the situation was it was pretty you know significant and so that 200 percent that just turned that thousand dollars into uh, you just turn you got an extra two thousand on top of that so that's three thousand dollars all together your total two thousand dollar investment is now three thousand that's a fifty percent gain altogether and so why not straddle why not eat, have your uh, cake and eat it too you can have the best of both worlds 
because the stock market is so manipulated, it's so volatile that you know we can't we can't rely on the hope system. We can't just hope to throw money at something and hope that it sticks because somebody is going to manipulate something or something's going to happen and it could be a war, it could be it could be all kinds of things. You know, uh, Biden can say that or uh, that he's got COVID now and the whole stock market will tank 5%. Things just happen unexpectedly and 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 as as much as we try to know uh, as much as what's going to happen uh again sometimes there's things that that just happen unexpectedly and uh but we just have to be aware of and uh, but like i said we'll get more into that here uh, in a bit <clears throat> uh, crude oil inventories again there's nothing uh, on the forecast but most likely there will be tomorrow Whoever you know puts these forecasts on there, you know obviously they're maybe they're late. Maybe it could be on here uh, later today, and that's why it's really important that we look at this stuff every single day. So the previous report of the oil inventories, and again this is one of the reports that we need down. The lower the number, the better. So uh, the oil inventories. So if we're down in the negatives, that's good because that means we're, 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 we're dealing oil, we're, we're buying, selling, we're pumping it, whatever the heck we're doing, uh, but it means that people are, 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 are driving, they're flying, they're, they're, they're traveling, they're, they're spending money, that helps the economy. If they're not, the oil inventory levels will go up and that's a, a not, definitely another thing I think that's gonna happen because if the fuel prices go up, they're not, people aren't gonna drive as much. That's going to cause the oil inventory levels to, to go up, which will also create bearish characteristics. But on the good side, it'll also help lower our gas prices. <laughs> Uh, but overall, we're talking about the stock market. It, it, it's going to provide bearish characteristics. So it's going to keep, you know, causing, you know, more. Uh, it's going to keep the bearish uh, more bearish. And so, um, so well, to be determined. Uh, but again, these oil inventory levels are a weekly report. So this is basically the uh, for last week. We may not see such a big impact just yet. That may be next week's uh, economic report. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, so, but then Wednesday. So then we have the the Fed meetings at uh, one o'clock uh, Eastern time. So this is definitely going to affect the stock market uh, several hours before the stock market closes. So we have a lot of different things that the, the government talks about during this these Fed meetings. They talk about you know economic projections and energy and, and blah, blah, blah. But one of the, the big things that investors in Wall Street are mostly going to keep their eyes on are the interest rate decisions. Now, uh, it's been crazy with, with these guys. You know, they, they, they were for the last, you know, several years, they were just talking about, you know, doing things very mildly. Uh, and, and then all of a sudden it just got really aggressive and mildly meaning like they were saying, let's do, uh, let's increase interest rates twice a year for two years at a quarter percent at a time. So at two years, that's just 1%. So then they started being, let's do three. And then we're like, no, let's do four uh, rate hikes per year for the next two years. So, okay, then that would be, you know, 2% altogether. Then they're like, some politicians, oh, that's not good enough. Now we got to do, uh, you know, five or a half percent, uh, uh, you know, four or five times a year for the next, uh, you know, two years. You know, the economy isn't going to, you know, recover fast enough, blah, 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 you know, whatever. And, and so, so Wall Street's like, whoa, 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 you know, and so when they see this, that's too much too quickly. And so that's going to provide bearish characteristics. If they could stick with this going mildly, then the investors in Wall Street will be like, whoo, OK. And then so that may create uh, bullish characteristics. So there's a lot of politicians, especially with what's going on with Ukraine and, and, and Russia. There's a lot of politicians are now saying, no, 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 we, we can't do a half percent at a time. We need to do a quarter percent because of the with the, the, the stuff that's going on with Russia and Ukraine. It's just going to be too much for our economy. We need to do we need to be it more mildly and, and do it at, at a quarter percent at a time. So there is a big fight between these politicians that are in between these two. So we really have to wait and see what happens 
because this, you know, deep, this depends on our, uh, well, our, 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 the power hour will depend on this. So as we watch this, we'll have to wait and see what happens because if it picks one or the other, then we know how, how Wednesday is going to close. So uh, we'll have to watch that. But also we have to look at the, the White House schedule and, and Biden schedule on a daily basis because they don't really reveal their weekly you know, schedule because it, it, it changes on the fly. Uh, it changes daily. And so um, that's why we can't really look ahead on their schedule because things happen and they're always having to adjust things all the time. And so that's why we always like to discuss this in our chat rooms uh, because um, it, it, it's always you know changing. And so we always, you know, that's why we, we stay together. We, we, we work together as a team uh, because every investor and trader usually specializes in something different. Sometimes we're focused on something over here while another uh, one of you guys are focused on something over there. And that's why we can bring everything together. And that's why we're extremely successful and, uh, and, and, and we do very well. And so, uh, so Wednesday, it's going to be a mess. So, uh, but we'll have to kind of take a look at this again tomorrow to, uh, to check the forecast for the crude oil inventory levels, because obviously they're still trying to figure it out. So Thursday, going to Thursday, March 17th, we have three economic reports that are scheduled to be released all at once. My goodness. So we have the building permits, then we have the unemployment report, and then we have the Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index. Now the building report for the month of February, is, uh, well, the previous report for January was just under 1.9. It was at 1.895 million. And so uh, it's forecast to be a little less, but you know, within kind of proximity of, 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 of the previous one. Uh, and so, but we do have to account for, you know, maybe weather. We had some, some, some snowstorms uh, back east and whatnot that I would think that may have slowed down uh, building. Uh, but, um, but then we have our unemployment reports. As we've noticed, unemployment's been kind of rising uh, in, in the last several weeks. And so it, last report was, uh, was up 227,000. Uh, the forecast, um, it, they're anticipating it being a little uh, lower, but, uh, but like I said, unemployment's trending upwards for, for some reason. Um, I'm not sure, you know, why, uh, but uh, other than the fact that I know a lot of people just don't want to, you know, work or whatever. I don't know. It's just, just weird, you know, uh, you know, whatever it is maybe we're getting more refugees in here maybe they're filing I, I don't know if that's all tied into it but uh but usually once we quite you know once we get to a high point which i think this has been one of our uh recent high points um it usually kind of bounces back off of there and kind of comes down a little bit it hasn't really surged or plunged it's just been hovering right around that 220 uh 210,000. Uh, people that are filing for unemployment every week. Um, so, but it, almost 2.30, like I said, we're, we're kind of on that high side now, uh, but I would expect it to, to come down a little bit, but, uh, but to be determined, because uh, like I said, this stuff may affect the rest of the trading day. So we'll have to really see what this is going to do. Uh, but like I said, it's very effective for our straddling strategies. So going into Friday, then we have existing home sales. This is basically our used houses uh, that uh, uh, hold the majority of the uh, uh, real estate sales. <clears throat> and so this report is scheduled to be released, uh, what, 30 minutes before the stock market opens. So this will again affect uh, pre-market. Now, typically we don't have this many things that affect uh, pre-market. Usually we have two, maybe three days at most, but we have four days of, of a lot of volatility during uh, pre-market. Uh, just Monday might, uh, you know, we'll just have to see what, you know, Monday is like. Uh, again, Mondays usually absorb some of the weekend uh, uh, news. And so Monday morning could easily be very volatile, but or it could be pretty dead and flat. Uh, but, uh, but we'll have to see uh, what the U.S. futures look like. 
which uh, using the investing.com website, you can also use, or view the, uh, the US futures and uh, monitor that by the second. The US futures usually typically begin uh, in about, uh, about uh, I think about five hours from now. So we can start monitoring that uh, throughout um, uh, Sunday evening. Um, so, and again, all this stuff is really, really important. This is gonna affect the entire stock market system. Uh, but then the next thing to really look over uh, is the uh, earnings reports. And so uh, every, um, every uh, Saturday, I always post you know, uh, a lot of our, uh, our featured stuff uh, in here and uh, they just looks like they just kind of really you know, mess. Or, this whole thing looks a little different. But uh, so I always post our earnings uh, calendar inside the um, the uh, um, our featured area. It used to be called the announcement area. Now it's just called the uh, um, the um, featureds. But for some reason. I'm having mouse problems here. I think my battery's dying. But uh, so, and it's always on the top. I pretty much kind of either bookmark things or uh, or I'll post things in here, but we'll have our scheduled uh, earnings. And we are approaching, like I said, the end of the first quarter. We're, we're, we're approaching the end of the bearish season. We're also approaching the end of the, um, of the earning season but also i believe we're approaching the end of our energy season such as gas oil i really don't think that uh, oil is really going to go up much higher than what it is now uh oil has been kind of going up well since biden took office but uh but i think where we've reached its peak we are entering bank season soon uh, because as we were talking about banks are going to start increasing interest rates if banks start increasing interest rates what happens they become more profitable so uh, between now and the next two years as they keep increasing interest rates they're going to keep getting more profitable and and their share values are going to keep uh, appreciating so if you are a long-term short-term investor it's a definitely a good time to start looking at banks and you'll notice that the majority of, uh, of long-term and short-term investors are buying into bank of america and jp morgan chase and, and and whatnot because they're 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 such a low value right now and everything's such a you know discounted price because we're we're at the peak of our our bear season so um <clears throat> but again with the earnings season though we the earnings even though we're at the towards the end of the first quarter these earnings uh, are still based off of the, of the fourth quarter uh, financial earnings information. So, uh, but we can always look at, and the top ones are always gonna have usually the most, you know, highest market capital, most anticipated type stocks. Uh, and so like Dole or, or whatnot, Shift, Catapult, um, you know, so there's gonna be a lot of, you know, uh, you know, big ones, especially like FedEx. FedEx is Thursday after close, they're probably, you know the uh, the probably the highest market cap uh, here. But then we have GameStop is going to be one of the most in highly anticipated ones. Now Hut Eight is one of the first times we've ever talked about Hut Eight. I had no idea exactly what it is, but it's like a Bitcoin mining uh, company. So it's very interesting. So it's definitely going to be on the news uh, this week. And so and then we have General Dollar and and, and so on. So uh, so it's nice to have this as a calendar so we know what will what will happen and sometimes some big uh, market cap stocks like FedEx can affect uh, that segment especially if it moves uh, uh, you know it becomes really volatile after earnings it can definitely move its other competitors whether it be bullish or, or bearish uh, now um, uh, we also they really changed this and so um, I'll put, I'll also post usually either Saturday evening or Sunday morning, the top tens uh, analysis um, uh, reports uh, in the group. So not only do you get the, the top 10 listed on here like FedEx, GameStop and, and so on, but they're also posted right here. 
So for example, we'll, we'll look at FedEx, we'll, we'll click on that one, and then, I'll, I'll, and then you can see that it's confirmed that FedEx is scheduled to report their earnings Thursday after close. The company's uh, earning release has an 80% expecting an earnings beat. Now, out of all 10 of these, I think FedEx holds the highest percentage uh, of, uh, of expecting an earnings beat out of all the other ones. All, most of the other ones are like 50%. Uh, and again, this is we're talking fourth quarter here. So, what does FedEx do? They're they're going nuts trying to deliver Christmas gifts and packages and stuff. So, of course, they're they're going to be you know most likely they're going to beat their earnings. Uh, but just because they beat their earnings, uh, they somebody could say, oh, but the first quarter you know is expected to be down. Blah blah blah. They could end up saying something that can spook investors. And they they're they're trying to say good news, but all of a sudden they, they end up putting their foot in their mouth, and all of a sudden the stock market tanks. Investors are like, what's happening? The stock's going down. It's good news. Well, you know, this, things happen. You know, but most of the time things are expected to you know do what they're supposed to do. But like I said, sometimes there's a curveball that th that's thrown in there and it just does the opposite. So that's why it's just really important that we're always prepared. So if we do throw money at this, especially if it's a call, you know, uh, make that like a lottery play. If you throw money at it, you know, it, you know, don't expect to, you know, just, you know, maybe get it back, I, I guess, you know, uh, uh, and that's why it's important to, to straddle. But when we're straddling, we want to look at higher percentage movements because with, with FedEx, option traders are pricing in around a uh, almost just, just under a nine percent movement which is quite a bit for fedex because average movements just just under six percent so this is going to have a little extra move to it which uh, may not be as bad for uh, option traders uh, because when you're uh, straddling um, you know it, it usually takes a certain percentage movement to kind of cross over to make it profitable because when you're holding calls and puts in the same stock option most of the time uh, it could be a wash you could, you could lose some over here but you're gaining some over here but it's the exact same amount uh that's can, kind of canceling each other out but once you get to a certain point you can only lose so much on one side, but then your gains just keep gaining and gaining and gaining. And, and so then at this point, your one side, you could end up having 300% or 400%. You may be losing 90% on, on the other. And so this may be a really good place. We'll have to watch a lot of the, uh, the uh, options uh, activity uh, to see if there's anything flying under the radar. So, uh, <clears throat> mouse is dying here uh so let's keep going here so fedex and then the next one was uh, gamestop gamestop i think is going to continue to um, become very volatile and probably disappoint its uh its investors uh again i always tell people gamestop is a five dollar stock you know we we really saved it uh out of uh uh, going bankrupt and, and, and uh, we taught the hedge fund companies a, a lesson and so we're just keeping it afloat. Uh, it's not a long-term investment. <clears throat> uh, however, GameStop is uh, scheduled to re re uh, report their financial earnings on Thursday after close. The company uh, company's earning lease has only a 41% expecting an earnings beat. That is not good. That, you know, that basically just What's the opposite of that? That's like 60% chance it's going to go down. And so, uh, you know, more or less puts are in your favor by that much. And however, option traders are pricing in a 16% movement where in previous reports, it's had around that same movement, you know, 17 or 16, 17, 18% movement. So this is going to be a very volatile one, which would be great for straddling. So uh, again, straddling is very, uh, <clears throat> very effective. And it's a great insurance play because just in case if something goes wrong, you know, you're, you're covered. And so, uh, and again, when it comes to straddling, it's, it's, it's highly recommended to use the the, 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 the soonest expiration date because the sooner it expires, the more volatile it's going to be. That means big movements uh, in either direction. And that's what we want because it, we want it to move big and we want it to cancel out the loss in the, in the other one and, and to uh, keep going. And 
the next day when you're going to sell these, you can sell them at the same time or you can sell them at different times, maximizing your gains on one side and minimizing your losses on the other side. So GameStop is going to be a lot of people that are definitely going to be uh, watching and uh, playing these these uh, these strategies. <clears throat> so the next one is going to be this Hut Eight Mining Company. Look at that, and that's why I put a lot of you know pictures because the pictures can say a thousand words. We can kind of look to see uh, what exactly uh, you know this company does just by looking at some of the uh, visual information that's in the image. Now Hut Eight Mining has confirmed the report, their earnings report on Thursday morning before the stock market opens. The company's earnings release has an 85% expecting an earnings beat, which is higher than uh, FedEx. Now, normally these percentages are around 65, 67%. Any higher than that, we gotta consider that unusual, uh, or if it's any lower than that, uh, we have to kind of look at that as, as unusual as, as well, because like I said, normally it, 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 it averages around 65 percent so 85 percent that is well above uh, average so uh and again like i've mentioned I, we've never talked about this uh as as much as we are now in our group so there's there's something going on there this, this company is probably growing we need to start doing some research because uh this stock has been flying underneath the radar and so uh, <clears throat> the company's Oh, so option traders are pricing in around a 14% movement on earnings, where before it's had uh, around less than a 4% movement on recent quarters. So there's something big that's expected to happen with this. And that's why we're talking about these economic reports, we're talking about this, is because we, we never want to have something, uh, we never want to not know that something's going to happen. And so, uh, the, the, the pro traders have always said buy on rumors, sell on news. And one of the reasons why they say that is because we're supposed to be holding it before it's on the news, because when it's on the news, uh, then uh, that's the perfect time to secure our gains uh, and things are high uh, and, and you don't want to buy high. You, you buy low, you sell high. And so, uh, you know, typically, unless you're an option trader, then put become, you know, opens up a whole new uh, uh, category of, of strategies. Uh, however, so that's that. Let's go, uh, let's, let me click back here. We'll go back to the next one. Uh, but those ones are pretty much going to be the, um, that hold the majority, I think, of the activity. Uh, Dollar General, uh, you know, not so much uh, as a retail store. Um, uh, and they're growing. I mean, they're, they've been a, a good growing, expanding store, but um, but because of inflation, I don't know how a dollar uh, uh, store can really profit now because of due to inflation and cost of uh, uh, fuel prices and shipping and, and whatnot. So, I, you know, these guys could be hurt, you know, between Dollar Tree and Dollar General. However, the Dollar General is confirmed to release their earnings report Thursday morning before the stock market opens. But the company release has a 52% expecting an earnings beat, which is not good either. It's definitely below average, as we were talking about. Option traders are pricing in around a 6.5% movement, when in average they've had less than a 3% movement. So, uh, yeah, Dollar General, it's not going to get as much attention as some of the other ones we've been talking about. Now we have this one here, the Ideanomics. Uh, IDEX is kind of the uh, ticker name, uh, which they have used to have a lot of uh, um, activity. I think they used to be like, what, a penny stock uh, back in a while. I'm not sure how much they are now, but the company release has a 57% expecting earnings beat. And I don't believe I've ever really analyze this one it's never really been in our top 10 most anticipated financial earnings this is the first time it's been since i've created this group five years ago so this is very interesting that it's on here now our option traders are pricing in at 50 almost a 55 or not 55 a 35 percent price movement i have never seen a price movement that high on the top 10 since we've since i've been doing this for the last five uh, years with this group and so uh, however the, the stock has had an average of 8% movement in recent quarters 
And so there's something else going on with this one. We, so we got to do a little bit more due diligence, looking at our, our graphs and charts and, and, and the news to figure out why are these that's never been on here before, why are they on here now? <clears throat> and why are they expected such a big movement between this one and that, uh, that HUT-8 one that, that we were just talking about? So these are definitely on our watch list. Let's do some more research on these before the uh, stock market opens. Uh, let's continue uh, looking at some of these other ones. Then we have uh, Stone. I believe this is a, uh, it's like a, uh, like a credit card processing company. Uh, I think mostly down in Brazil, uh, but, um, but they're expected to release their financial earnings uh, this Thursday after close. It's also another one that has never been in our top 10 uh, uh, most anticipated financial or, or release earnings, but the company release does have a 74% expecting earnings beat. So something's obviously going on with this company as well because option traders are, are pricing in uh, almost a 20% price movement where in the past they've, they've only moved around 10% in either direction. So 20%, my goodness, these are these that we're looking at are phenomenal uh, uh, opportunities for straddling. You know what, because you know, no matter which way they go, whether they go up or down, as long as they go and move this amount, it's going to be profitable tremendously. You know, and, and so, and so, yeah, this is just going to, these are great, amazing opportunities. So, and again, these can be found in the top of our group. Just click under the, uh, the featured areas. Uh, let's keep going. Let's take a look at some more of these, these, uh, great opportunities. And then we have the, uh, Ballard power systems. So Ballard Power Systems, obviously. So now we're looking at this or more, uh, more into technology and everything. So uh, the company, uh, so Ballard Power Systems is scheduled to, re to release their uh, earnings uh, Monday mornings. So that's tomorrow morning before the stock market opens. The company's earning release has a 53% expecting an earnings beat, where option traders are pricing in around a 17% price movement, where before they've had around a 10% price movement in either direction. So it's definitely going to be very volatile one tomorrow. Uh, let's keep going. Just a few more. <clears throat> uh, then we have uh, this one, the uh, GOL. This is an airlines company. I forget what what country that that they're uh, that they're from, but uh, but they're also scheduled to release their earnings report Monday morning, tomorrow morning before the stock market opens. And the company's earning release has a 54% expecting their earnings beat, which is definitely below average. But their option traders are pricing in around a 28 almost a 30% price movement. My goodness, another another strong one. Now at 54%, that's that's a whole lot of uncertainty right there, price movement. I would expect this thing is probably gonna plunge down. Uh, I just, you know, it could be because you know, people just aren't traveling as much uh, anymore. They're driving, that's what they're doing. They're not flying over in different countries or flying around as, as much as they used to. So, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot of airlines like American Airlines, United Airlines, all those guys are down. This guy is next. So uh, it's not looking good for them, but it's definitely looking good for us. So uh, let's keep going. We'll take a look at the uh, next one. Uh, then we have Whole Earth Brands. As you can see here, uh, Whole Earth Brands is confirmed to also release their earnings report tomorrow morning before the stock market opens. They have a 66% expecting an earnings beat, which is right about normal. Option traders are pricing in around an 8.5% price movement on the earnings in either direction when they've uh, usually averaged around half of that, around 4.5%. And then just looking at the picture here, you can see you know some of their different products and stuff that they sell. You may see at the grocery store. You may or may uh, buy these or, or not, but it's it's still kind of neat to uh, to look at. Uh, then last but not least, we have the Accenture is confirmed to release their earnings report. Thursday morning before the stock market opens. So the company's release earnings has a 68% expecting an earnings beat, which is right around average. The option traders are pricing in around 7.5% price movement on this, on this on the stock, where the stock usually has moved around 4.5%. So a lot of great opportunities uh, with these. Uh, and it's also important because every Sunday morning, 
vesting.com will post an article, the top five things, which are really the top most important uh, things to really to, to be watching for for the week. Now, once we do our due diligence, it's really important that, that we uh, read this article because it's gonna talk a lot about some of the things that we were just uh, going over, but also it may talk about something that we may have missed. So, um, so we'll, we'll read it together here. So the Federal Reserve is widely expected to announce its, its first interest rate hike since 2018 on Wednesday. And like, like I mentioned, we, we talked about that. We talked about you know some of the, the, the outcomes. As policymakers try to balance the, the twin threats of inflation, which is also running at a four decade high, and economic uncertainty arising from the war in uh, uh, Ukraine. The Bank of England is also expected to uh, hike rates again this week, while central banks in Japan, Turkey, and Brazil will also hold policy meetings. The massive rally in commodities look set to continue while stocks continue to struggle. Here's what you need to know. Uh, to start your week. So the first one, very, very important, is going to be the, the, the federal rate hikes. So the Fed had has clearly signaled that it intends to deliver a quarter uh, point interest rate hike after its two-day policy meeting concludes on Wednesday to combat soaring inflation, which at 7.9% is far above the Fed's 2% uh, target. A larger half percentage point rate hike is no longer on the cards since Russia's invasion of Ukraine sent commodity uh, prices soaring and targeted major uncertainty in the financial markets. Now, now they say that though, but then again, it's it, it's on the little forecast sheet that we were looking at. So again, there could be some politician that will say, no, no, we can't do a quarter percent. We got to do a half percent. So we still have it's really important that we watch what decision that they actually come up with. Because like I said, somebody can kibosh that and say, no, we're doing a half percent. So massive rallies in the commodities have added to pressure on global central banks to tighten uh, monetary uh, policy and curb inflation. But this has sparked concerns that higher interest rates will act as a drag on the economic growth at a higher time when price increases are, are already weighing on consumers. The Fed will be releasing its updated dot plot, which tracks projections for interest rates with in investors uh, keen to uh, see how the war is affecting the monetary policy outlook. Investors will also be on the outlook for uh, any guidance on plans for the central bank's almost $9 trillion uh, balance sheet. Uh, number two is the Bank of England. So the Bank of England is expected to also, you know, rate hikes for their third time since uh, December after its meeting on Thursday. But officials are expected to opt for another quarter percent point increase rather than a larger half point move. Uh, the Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey is expected to signal that more rate hikes are coming with official keen to uh, mitigate uh, against the risk of high inflation becoming uh, in, in, entrenched. Uh, consumer price inflation in the United Kingdom hit an almost 30 year high in January at five and a half percent because of a higher energy cost of supply chain bottlenecks. As with the Fed, investors will be watching for banks' assess, uh, assessment of how the war in Ukraine is affecting the outlook for interest rates. The head of the Bank of England meeting the United Kingdom is to release its latest employment report on Wednesday with the earnings components uh, likely to be in a sharp focus as living costs escalate. So uh, number three is a commodity rally. <clears throat> the recent massive rally in the commodity prices could potentially uh, be set to continue for an extended period with a, uh, with a quick uh, uh, resolution to uh, the war in Ukraine in doubt. Uh, the war and in, in, in ensuing sanctions on Russia sent oil prices to a 14 year high and a natural gas price near records. Uh, prices for wheat and copper uh, stand near all time highs while uh, a, a doubling of price of nickel uh, last week forced the London Metals Exchange to halt trading in the metal, which is crazy to halt trading in, in metal. My gosh, 
Uh, United States government officials have called on domestic and global producers to ramp up oil output to offset the supply shock. And there is talk around potential supply additions from Iran, Venezuela, and the United Arabs, or the Arab uh, uh, Emirates. Uh, in the coming week, the market watchers will be turning their focus to reports from the International Energy Administration and the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries. Number four is the stocks struggle. The benchmark of the S&P 500 logged its second straight weekly decline last week while the Dow fell for a fifth straight week as uncertainty over the conflict in Ukraine weighed and uh, 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 attention turned to the upcoming Fed meeting. Stocks have struggled this year as concerns about the Russia-Ukraine crisis uh, has deepened a sell-off initially fueled by worries over higher uh, bond yields with the Fed on course to tighten uh, monetary policy. The S&P 500 is down almost 12% so far in 2022. While investors have accepted the Fed will uh, likely begin raising rates next week. There is still a, a lack of clarity of how far and how fast the Fed moves from there. Lindsay Bell, uh, who, who basically said that, uh, with the market taking action in the form of volatility and possibly reducing demand, the Fed may not have to move as quickly. Still, the pace of inflation will be the key driver of policy changes for the better part of this year. So the last but not least, the fifth one is the central banks. Now these aren't going to have as big of a of a of an impact on our our, our uh, stock market, but it will a, a little bit. So the Dovish Bank of um, of Japan is is not expected to announce any changes of the monetary policy while its two day meeting ends on Friday, with an inflation still running far behind the rest of the world for now. In emerging markets, Turkey's central bank is expected to keep its one-week repo rate on hold at 14% on Thursday, despite inflation reaching a two-decade high of 54% in February. President, uh, uh, whatever, uh, unconventionally approach to monetary policy favors losers rather than tighter uh, monetary policy or looser rather than tighter monetary policy to combat inflation. The Central Bank of Brazil also meets on Thursday and is expected to uh, hike rates to uh, about 11.75% in what would be the ninth straight increase in a row amid an annual inflation rate of 10%. Wow, those are all really aggressive. Uh, Russia's Central Bank is to meet on Friday. So wait, Russia's Central Bank is, is, is uh, to meet on Friday after having already doubled its interest rate to an all-time high of 20% following an invasion of Ukraine in bid to offset some of the impact from the harsh international sanctions. Russia's stock market will remain closed again this week, which I, they, I think it's been closed for, what, for two, two weeks now, because as soon as they open, it, it's, gonna, it's just gonna plummet. It could plummet probably 90%. So there's just a lot of activity going on uh, uh, that's scheduled to happen. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, some options activity. Now, when it comes to stock options, I use a website called barchart.com. Barchart.com is free, doesn't cost anything, unless you wanna sign up for, their, for their, some of their stuff. But when I click on options, a menu appears, and I'll click on most active options. Now, the information that we're gonna see on this is going to pertain to uh, Friday's information or the last trading day, or if you're looking at this information while the market's open, it's going to be live. But the order that it's in will, will update every 15 minutes, but the price changes and everything are live. And so you'll be able to watch and monitor the entire options system right here at your fingertips. And so, but since the stock market's closed right now, this is Friday's information right when they close. So Apple had dominated the, the options list uh, we have by, and this is sorted out by volume. So we were just under 1.4 million in options volume. Now out of this volume, 56% are, are bought calls where 43% bought puts. So whether you're into stock options or not, this is still highly valuable and intelligent information that can really help 
give you information of what investors are doing. Are they are they betting the stock price is going to go up or are they betting it's, it's going to go down? If you see this near 50-50, kind of like what it's at, people are straddling. They're buying both calls and puts because they they don't know what Monday is going to be like. Monday, it, everything can be up. Monday could be down uh, by a lot because we're going into what we're going into the weekend. We don't know all, anything could happen, you know, and especially as uh, with some of the news that we're getting with with the uh, Russian invasion uh, with Ukraine. They're, 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 Russia is moving closer to the West. What we just lost an American journalist uh, because uh, they were in the Western area of Ukraine. Russia is getting closer to the, the Poland border. So uh, again, Wall Street investors are going to freak out because they're, they're, they're worried of a World War III. So no matter what happens over there, if they can reduce the the risk of a World War III or the war getting out of your Ukraine, our market will begin to re recover, even if there's if there's still fighting going on in that country. Um, but again, so we have to look at, at as a risk level. If the risk and so with this information that we're seeing, the risk level just got higher. So that's why I think yeah, Monday everything should definitely be opening. In, in, in the in the red and then as we're looking on Tuesday's economic reports and everything else Tuesday could easily open up in the green so a, a good recovery good algorithm you know uh, every day you know so uh, but looking at this so we're, we're seeing a lot of 50 50 almost so this look this looks like a lot of straddling a lot of uh, activity but at first there was a lot of puts there, there was a lot of puts activity and then and, but you'll you'll notice as you're looking at this regularly every day, you'll you'll see a fluctuation in these per, of, of these percentages. Now, you will typically see Apple and Tesla on the top of this list uh, regularly every day because it's a most favorite stock option for day traders and swing traders. They trade it all the time, uh, and when you're looking at this list regularly, you'll see things that are normally on here because people like to trade those. But every once in a while, you'll see things that are not normally on the list. And when you see that, we got to consider that as unusual activity because, again, it's not normally on the list. And all of a sudden that it is, uh, we may see something that, uh, uh, you know, where, you know, uh, it has a high percentage or a high percentage or a high percentage on the calls or maybe it's a high percentage on the puts. You know, like for some reason, we have the AT&T on the bottom. You know, for some reason, it's at 71%. You know, why is it that high uh, compared to everything else? That's near 50%. You know, so obviously investors are thinking that something is going to happen. Sometimes, you know, where we can find something that's flying under the, under the radar. It hasn't happened yet. Like, for example, uh, you know, when, uh, when GameStop was $5 a share, we we watched GameStop show up on here. GameStop is not normally on this list, and all of a sudden, it boom! It was it was four dollars, five dollars, six dollars, and all of a sudden, people there was ninety percent call ratio. It's like uh, something's happening here. It's and and you know it's flying, and it wasn't even on the news yet. You know nobody even knew what was going on, but all of a sudden, you know uh, it was happening, and we we can find things that happened before it happens right on this list. And so, uh, but going down this, this this list, now all of a sudden we have NEO. NEO is not normally on this list. And if they are, they're usually on the bottom, but the, here they are, number three on this list. They're down almost 10%, $16. What a great price that is, my gosh. Now this thing had touched, what, $60, $70? At, at one time and, and eventually it will they're you know they were down in their uh delivery and sales and everything last month so uh but they're they're building a second factory and so there's a lot of growth uh, with this company uh, the china and the chinese government is going to make a certain that this is going to be china's version of tesla and so uh but uh, but out of this uh, amazing amount of uh, volume, almost 58% are betting that the stock is going to go up the next trading day or this day or within you know a short period of time. Uh, and so there's there's just more calls activity. Uh, and but it's still almost 50 50. You know, even if you if you straddle it, uh, you're going to come out ahead if it moves another 10% in either direction. Uh, that's a win win no matter what. Uh, and then we have NVIDIA. NVIDIA is, is 
normally on this list or maybe on the uh, towards the bottom but they are there's a lot of activity uh on them and so uh we just gotta kind of keep an eye on uh, and a lot of this stuff so this is a great area that we need to really uh, look at especially when you see something that like oracle here uh you know 77 dollars um you know it, it, it's up one and a half percent where everything else is 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 in the red you know so, uh, there may be a lot more uh, green positive bullish uh momentum with this going into uh, this week we just have to you know see what uh, uh uh why this is on this list when normally oracle is never on this list and so and just kind of you know keep doing our our, our due diligence now, and again, this is the most active options area. You can click on the ETFs if you've gotten that far. We can look at like SPY, uh, it holds even more volume. Now SPY again is our S&P 500, it's just the ETF version of it, where we can trade off of it. Uh, it was down uh, you know, one and a quarter uh, last Friday, but we can see that uh that it's holding the majority of puts almost you know over 63 percent are betting that the s p 500 is going to keep going down that's just just like it's saying that the entire stock market is going to keep going down on on on, on well that current day but also going into next trading day uh for for uh for monday so when we're looking at this especially with this this amount of majority of investors and traders they're basically saying that, you know, 63% chance Monday is going to be in the red. 33% chance Monday is going to be in the green. So that's a, it's a great way to really kind of convert this information to figure out certain things, uh, pieces of the puzzle. Then we have our NASDAQ. So kind of the same thing. We kind of have a 50-50. So with those types of investors, they're they're just they're straddling you know they're saying well there's a you know 49 percent chance monday's going to be in the red 51 percent chance monday's going to be in the green and so uh we kind of look at those uh like that as as well and so uh but just huge volatility and so but like i said it's just recommended to straddle both calls and puts and it's good to do kind of an even amount 50 50 you know like say a thousand here on that side, thousand on that side, or ten thousand here, ten thousand there, or hundred, hundred, whatever. Or it, at most, if you if you really feel that puts may be more in your favor, you can go a little heavier on puts. Like go maybe sixty percent on puts, and uh, and 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 forty percent on calls. You know, uh, you can do it that way. But uh, but you need to have a, a kind of an, a good even balance. But it can be off a little bit as long as it's not off that much uh but there's another area on the options menu you we can go to is the option volume leaders now if we click on that now it's going to show us all of the most highly active individual calls and puts for that particular trading day so we're looking at friday now the first thing we want to look at is the dte that's the number of days until it expires so when we're looking at it on a Friday, that means that it's still active for that day, but that's the last day uh, before it's gone. We're looking at the, during the weekend, that's just meaning like that's what it was. It's not, it's no longer valid. It's, it's no longer, we can't trade it anymore because it, it's, it's, it's expired. So if we look at it going into tomorrow uh, or, uh, you know, whenever the next active uh, or the next trading day is, this will disappear and, and it'll, you'll just see the ones that are not expired. So those are the ones we're going to focus on is the ones that still have a, uh, a valid expiration date. So really that makes it that the Apple holds the uh, the most active individual call and put. This is a $160 call strike price where Apple right now had closed around $154.73. This, this expires this Friday on March 18th and it holds uh, around almost 61,000 in, uh, in options volume. Now again, volume is today's buying and selling activity. Now you, you'll see something that says open interest. Now, if you're not, if you don't know options, open interest is an accumulation of volume. It, it because uh, when when you have when an option is created, volume is you know resets itself every day. 
but the open interest accumulates and tries to you know total the you know the the amount of volume it had prior you know previously and so when we when we're looking at this we see that the previous total volume or open interest was 34,000 but in one day we had nearly 61,000 in, in volume now sometimes when it comes to options volume we don't always know if it's buying activity or selling activity like like shares sometimes if, when you're looking at shares you can see a little graph and, and whatnot but not so much with with options but when you're looking at at this information when you see that the volume has exceeded over the total open interest that is almost like saying that's pure unusual buying activity <clears throat> because it exceeds over it <clears throat> if it was volume that was less than the open interest we don't know if that's a majority of selling activity or buying activity normally it's it's a blend of 50 50 but definitely when you see the volume is over the open interest that is that is a massive amount of buying uh, unusual buying activity and so there's a lot of option traders that for some reason that are buying a lot of uh, Apple calls that absolutely believe that it's going to um, it, that Monday must open up in the green. So uh, so the next active one is is, is the BHC uh, looks like there's two of them, but both of them have two different expiration dates. Now, BHC is currently at $22.32. We have two call strike prices at $20 a piece. The one expires next month in April 14th, uh, which is in approximately 33 days. And then we have another one that expires this Friday on March 18th. Uh, <clears throat> now, the one that expires in April had hardly no open interest only 3,000 and now all of a sudden on Friday had a huge amount of 44,000 in volume so that's that's like 99% pure buying activity for some reason so we, we need to figure out we add that to our watch list do some due diligence on what BHC is and and what is creating all of this unusual buying activity because again this is not normally on this list but when we're looking at the other one that expires this Friday, we see that the open interest is at 78,000, almost 79,000. We have a massive amount of volume on top of the, the other one. But since the volume of 47,000 is below the open interest, that could we don't know if that's buying activity or selling activity. That could be maybe they're selling that and buying the, uh, the extended uh, expiration. So, but all, obviously there's something going on and we need to figure it out. Uh, the next one that's active is this Eric uh, stock, which is currently at $8.45. We have a call strike price of $9 that expires in approximately 33 days next month on, on uh, April 14th. Uh, it only had an open interest of only 2,300, just under, or just a little over 2,000. And now all of a sudden it has a massive amount of volume of almost 42,000. So there's another one that is uh, flying under, under the radar for some reason. So we need to figure out what's going on that and figure out why people are uh, betting that it's going to go up to that. And again, even if you're not into stock options, we can still look at this as highly valuable information of what investors are doing and what they're betting on because we can rely on what you know people's feelings and thoughts and things like that we can talk in social media of, of what the what analysts are thinking that but again we can follow the money you know put your money where your mouth is blah 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 and and, and this is it this is where it's showing where people are putting their money and so if they absolutely believe that and betting that it's going to go from eight you know 850 to, to nine dollars you know that that's a you know that could be like a five percent gain you know within uh 30 days and so uh you know we can buy as many shares of that hold on to that and, and then until further notice but you know that's where we can really tell uh you know where people are really uh betting that these stocks are going to go and then we have another apple right here we have a, a call pr uh, a price at 165 dollars where it's currently just under $155. That's, that's a pretty big difference 
between the two, but there's a lot of, you know, activity on there. But again, the volume's below the open interest. Uh, definitely, we need a lot. Look, there's a couple more puts. Those are expired. So and you can always go down the, uh, the, the list. And you can also click on unusual volume uh, activity too to try to look for other ones that have a big gap distance between the uh, oh wait hold on I didn't uh, click on the wrong one unusual options activity uh, what we want to look for is the the biggest difference between the volume and open interest so we have this one right here which is a neo that's expired so that doesn't doesn't count anymore there's an 18 that one's still good that one's still good we got another we have a neo call right here 18 dollars call strike price where it's currently at 16 dollars expires this friday the open interest just 700 basically hardly anything now all of a sudden we got 18,000 in call activity so there's a lot of investors that believe there's going to be a good little recovery on neo and so uh there's a lot of a lot of activity on that one. Uh, next one, uh, we have the uh, FSLY. We have a, a put strike price. A lot of investors believe that one's going to keep going down. Uh, $12.50 uh, put strike price, where it's just right under $14 now. Had an open interest of just 100 100 that's it. Had nothing. Now, all of a sudden, volume 15000 Now, it's got a lot of something. You know, same thing uh, with this one, DD, uh, little penny stock. Even if you're into penny stocks, you know, that may be a good one because to go from 189 to 250, that's like what, 20% gain or something like that. And so, uh, or more, 30%, uh, uh, 40, you know, whatever. And so, uh, you know, you might want to buy a bunch of shares of that if, uh, if you're not into uh, stock options, you know, whatever. So there's just a lot of great valuable information uh, you can collect uh, from this this page. Oh, one more thing too, uh, from the option volume leaders. Now again, it always defaults to the volume. And again, volume is, to, uh, is the current trading days buying and selling activity. But let's change it to open interest. So we'll click on open interest. It's going to sort it out, but it, it sorts it out on this page, not the entire system, because it wants you to buy their service and whatnot, but there's a glitch. So if you click uh, refresh on your browser, it will refresh the entire system. So now the entire system has refreshed it to the open interest. So the open interest again is, you know, um, accumulation of volume pretty much. And so, uh, so there's basically it's telling you there's a lot of interest on NOC, which is Nokia. Nokia is currently at $4.81. We have a call strike price at $7 that expires next year on uh, January 20th, approximately 315 days. So you can either buy it as calls or maybe shares, because if you buy it as a share, to go from that to that, that's almost like a like 80% gain as a share. And so uh, that way you're not having to deal with it for, uh, or same thing with Ford. We have Ford F is their ticker name that we have, $16 share uh, uh, price at a $20 strike price that expires also next year on January 20th has a lot of open interests a lot I mean his second place highest most uh, highest open interest is uh, right there and so and to go from 16 to 20 and there's there's I'm sure there's more uh, you know in here there's a well there's a put but you know there's been a lot of calls with Ford at, 25 30 dollars and whatnot so ford is really just barely getting started when it comes to the electric vehicle segment they're building more uh, factories and whatnot they're manipulating their stock they're doing all the right things to make a lot of uh, money plus you know there's there's some uh really other good insider information that ford is really going to be working on and revealing this year so there's going to be a lot of great news for uh for, for investors. So uh, yeah, Ford is, is, is gonna be looking pretty uh, well this year. So um, all eyes on Ford for sure. And then we have Apple put and the Apple $150 uh, put strike price also pretty well dominates uh, this list, but it's only, you know, uh, uh, you know, expires in, in 30, you know, just about 30 days. So next month on uh, April 14th, 
but it's got a lot of open interest. So, but uh, uh, ben, that's why it's important to look at this regularly because this stuff changes, it, it fluctuates. Some areas will stay there. Some areas down over here will fluctuate. Some things will rise up, some things will fall below. Uh, but it's just really important to really look at, you know, pretty much everything, until everything kind of makes more more sense and, and to look for maybe other big, uh, you know, gaps. You know, like the big BBIG is currently at two dollars and fourteen cents. Wow, call strike price at five dollars. That's over a one hundred percent gain if it if it gets to that between now and April fourteenth. So <clears throat> it's got a lot of open interest. It's accumulating a little bit of volume here and there on a daily basis. Same thing with PLTR, the the Palantar Technologies, super low right now, eleven dollars and thirty nine cents. What a buy that is a $25 call strike price that expires next year on uh, uh, January 20th. The great deals here. I mean, these are like, you know, and again, we're approaching kind of like our, our the finale of our bearish season. Again, this Friday, Triple Witching Day is kind of our Black Friday of the stock market. So uh, this week, there's gonna be all kinds of discounted, uh, 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 but that's, you know, bad news can be great news. Just depends on how we utilize this information for our advantage. So another area on this website we wanna look at too, is we've talked a little bit about straddling. So here we have a straddling area in Strangle. So the, they're, both of those are essentially the same concept but the only difference between a straddle and a strangle is that a straddle is the same strike price strangle is different strike prices but we are still betting that the stock goes up and you're betting the stock goes down you're you're, you're buying both calls and puts just straddle is the same strike price or strangle they're different uh, different strike prices they could be a couple of dollars uh, a difference, maybe a $5 difference. One could be $5 higher while the other uh, is $5 lower. But you want to keep them pretty, pretty even and as close to the money as, as close as possible. Because in case if the straddling strategy doesn't work out, the price doesn't move, it, the, the, the stock price just stays flat, you're going to suffer time depreciation or time decay on both sides. That's why it's important to stay active. That's why it's important to know which stocks are going to be volatile and which ones are not. That way we can focus on the ones that are. That way we can profit from them. Now, when we're looking at these straddling strangle uh, sections of the of these graphs, and again, they update while the stock market updates. So these can be live, though they do update every 15 minutes. But when we're looking at these, the straddle uh, uh, categories, we want to try to find ones that have a numerous amount of. We don't want to just look at one that has just one. We want to see ones that have two, three, four, five of the same ones because we're looking for a, a lot of activity. We're looking for unusual activity on this. And so that way we could take advantage of, of the situation. So uh, looking down the list, you know, I don't really see multiple of the same things. Uh, I do see two NVIDIAs, so there's one. Uh, anything else? No, so there's two NVIDIAs. So um, so that may be showing some, some attention uh, there, but I don't see anything else. So we'll move on to the next one. We got short and long straddles. Now, both of them are pretty short regardless, and that's why we want to look at uh, all of them. So we'll start from the top, work our way down, and just kind of keep you know scanning them with your eyes, kind of see if there's if you can see multiple of the same things. Uh, pretty much on the first page as well. Uh, there's a couple apples, so there's two apples there. You don't really see anything else. So we have Apple and Nvidia. Uh, so we'll go to the next one. Uh, start from the top, work our way down. Now we have Pfizer, we have PFE right here. We have another one here. So there's two of them here. Uh, let's see. And as we're basically, as we're a lot of uh, uh, states, 
are really um, doing away with the mask mandates, vaccine mandates now, like it's like it's never even happened. Uh, you know, we're, we're out of the energy season. We're out of the whole you know vaccine, you know medical, you know uh, season now, and it's we're we're approaching the bank season, as I've mentioned before. All of a sudden now, what do we see here? We see Bank of America. You're going to see a lot more bank activity coming up as interest rates are increased. Just don't be that person two years from now where you know bank stocks are high. Should I buy now? I was like, man, I told you a long time ago that it was we're entering bank season, and uh, and and so it, it's just an algorithm. So every year the stock market has a certain algorithm. You know where the summertime things are bullish, the wintertime things are bearish, but the stock market also has a 10-year algorithm where every 10 years there's a catastrophic event like the COVID shutting down the economy uh, uh, or the 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 the, uh, the financial collapse and or the uh, the automotive uh, bailout or the twin towers getting hit, the Berlin Wall, and so on and so on. You know they they, they just use this as a way to really manipulate the stock to create kind of like a reset button without really resetting you know things but to create a massive dip to allow great uh buying opportunities now for uh for those that weren't trading during the shutdown and those that were you would remember that it was interesting because you know, here i am I'm, I'm day trading you know the, the the economy shut down everybody you know has to go home nobody's working blah 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 I'm, I'm doing my normal day trading i'm listening to yahoo finance bloomberg and whatnot and i remember uh you know when they start talking about oil they were like oh here it was we're looking at oil prices we're down to 12 dollars a barrel i've never even remember the last time I even mentioned that on the air here, blah, blah, blah. Here I'm doing my normal day trading. Another hour goes by. Holy moly, we're back on live uh, talking about the barrel of oil. It is now down negative $12 a barrel. Uh, when I heard that, I was like, holy, how is that possible? I've never even heard this negative $12 a barrel of oil. And now here the, the government's, uh, oh, we're going to start pumping up the economy or the uh, stock market. That way we can try to keep the stock market afloat. And what did they do? They pumped it up on oil and all kinds of stuff, trying to keep the, the, the stock market afloat. And, and they, they basically, they bought it cheap, negative $12 a barrel of oil. I had no idea it could get that low. But the, the our community said that the reason why it can be in the negatives is because it would cost the oil companies more money if they just sat on it. So it's better for them to cheap sell it and to keep the uh, to, to keep the, the business flowing. And I was like, I'll be damned. And here it is. I, I saw it the other day touched $129 a barrel. I'm sure that probably the government started selling. And it, we just, you know, it's, it's hard to find that type of information. But, you know, this stuff happens every 10 years, just like clockwork. And so it's just a normal algorithm. As long as you're aware of that, you know, you just, you just know, it's like playing Monopoly. You know, you, you, you know the rules inside and out. You know what to expect. You know what not to expect. You know, this and that. And so uh, it's just, yeah, it's just important to know because the more you learn, the more you're going to earn. And that's why we're talking about uh, these these things. So, so again, on this page, we have Pfizer and Bank of America. I don't really see um, really any other ones other than those. Uh, and then we'll go into the last uh, page for for the straddling strangles the long strangle uh, and so um, we'll see if we have any multiple ones on here starting from the top we'll work our way down uh, we see there's an AMD AMD there's one two and uh, that's it for there I wish we had a lot of like you know four five six of them here and there but we're, we're definitely seeing you know the ones that are showing you know quite a bit of uh, straddling uh, unusual straddling activity on these particular ones that we've just uh, gone over. Uh, going down in the other ones, uh, well, there's another video on this page, but not uh, multiple ones. Uh, so that's pretty much AMD on, on this page. So that's kind of what we want to do is, is looking at that kind of stuff. But once you kind of zeroed in on maybe a, a particular stock option, there's a website that I'll use, it's called uh, uh, from NASDAQ, Dot com where we can actually look at the most active individual calls and puts on a particular stock option. And you can Google it. If you go to Google, type in like AMD 
uh, NASDAQ or uh, type in NASDAQ AMD most active options or whatever the ticker is and it'll take you to that page. So, uh, and then again, this is Friday's you know information. So we're looking at AMD's most active individual calls and puts that we can see and compare everything side by side. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't show on this page the expiration date. Uh, ever since uh, uh, NASDAQ updated the website, they got rid of it, uh, but you have to click on it. So when you click on that particular uh, uh, strike price, it'll it'll then reveal what the expiration date is. So at least now you can know, okay, that one's expired, doesn't count. As we're doing our due diligence throughout the weekend, uh, we can kind of go down the list. But, but also you can kind of tell if it's expired worthless, and obviously that doesn't count. You know, so then we can go here that now we have some value here, 13.6. We can click on this little $100 one and see if it's still active and it is. So we have May 20th. So we have kind of a, a little longer uh, uh, expiration date on that. But out of all of them, this is showing the one with the highest uh, volume activity. And so, but it's also very interesting that we see a May expiration date because as we're approaching the end of our uh, uh, our bearish season, we're, we're going to start seeing more of these types of of uh, expiration dates as they uh, more into uh, the middle of the spring or, or summertime. And so, especially with the spring with this one, that way the value isn't that expensive because at, at 13 that's going to cost probably about $1,300 per contract. So that's going to be a, a spendy one. So, but yeah, just some great information, some great tools to really uh, to, to, to look over. Anybody have any questions about everything? Everything makes sense? Any, anything anybody wanted to go over? Feel free to speak live on your voice. You may have to unmute or you can chat in, in the uh, our uh, little Zoom chat room if you don't want to talk. If you don't have any questions or comments, I'm assuming everything makes sense and you're ready to rock and roll and make a lot of money this week. So you, it's Carlos, so you're saying this week will be bullish, right? Another week of bullish? Um, I'd say more bearish. This is I mean bearish. That's what I mean. of our bearish season. So okay. I, I think I think that the beginning and the end are going to hold the majority of the uh, bearish activity, but I think somewhere in the middle we're going to have some uh, some um, some bullish characteristics. Like I mm -hmm. said, Tuesday, uh, I'm thinking that Tuesday. Uh, hold on here, let me see. That's if it, yeah, Tuesday because that's. Part of like inflation stuff that that's that's good for the economy tuesday mm -hmm. like it could be uh bullish and going into wednesday it w but it also really depends on these economic reports because they they have a huge impact on our stock market but uh but again but by looking at the forecast being lower than the previous it, it's almost telling us be prepared this day is going to be bearish and so uh so Wednesday, it looks like it's going to be, especially with crude oil inventories, with the way oil's been and everything, I think less people are going to be driving. And so oil inventory levels are going to be higher. So that's, that, that should create more bearish activities. And then uh, Thursday, uh, God, it could even, so we may only have one bullish day this week. Okay. Uh, but then, so Friday, Friday morning, let's talk about Friday morning. Mm -hmm. So existing home sales. So existing home sales, again, is used houses. So again, what's starting to happen, the banks are wanting to increase interest rates. What does that do to people's minds? It makes them, uh, it, well, it, it makes them want to hurry up and get something before the interest rates start uh, increasing. So we could possibly see an increase in home sales before the interest rates go up. That way people can lock in these low interest rates because we're never going to see these low interest rates again for another 10 more years until the next dilemma happens. And so same thing with automobile automobile sales, you know, sales, you know, for vehicles are going to be up because people are going to be uh, trying to secure the low interest rates before they, they start doing these interest rate hikes. So there is a possibility 
that the bar is set low for the forecast for the existing home sales for Friday. And so Friday morning could easily open in the green, but uh, will definitely uh, close in the red because of, of several things. It's, it's triple witching day. So triple witching day is when many things expire, not just options, but tons of other things that expire, which naturally creates a lot of selling activity. So people need to get rid of that, whatever they were holding, and to buy into maybe longer expiration date things or whatever. And so, but also we're going into another weekend of uncertainty, not knowing uh, what's going to happen with the, the war between uh, Russia and, U and U Ukraine. And so, but I'm hoping that after that point, after that weekend, as you know, nothing has really happened over there and hopefully things are starting to calm down and the risk of, of, of uh, fighting outside of that territory has been reduced is when we will begin to see our, our, our economy or our stock market start to trend upwards and, and start to recover. So I think we're really uh, right around the, the corner. Even after the triple witching day, we our stock market may range another week or two, you know, just kind of flat. But I don't think we're going to see the, the type of uh, bearish volatility like we've been seeing the last uh, month or uh, month or so. So hopefully uh, that makes sense. But I think, yeah, overall, we're gonna, it's going to be a majority of uh, bearish characteristics. Anybody else have any questions? Anything or stocks you want to go over? Yes, the the hut eight. What do you think about the hut eight? Because it's it's five dollars right now. And I know you were we were talking about it earlier, saying um, something was going on with it. It looked like because it's only five dollars. So I was thinking about buying some shares of that. Yes, and so it, HUD 8 is definitely new to me. Uh, we definitely need to do more research on it because like I said, as I was analyzing our top 10 most anticipated release earnings, all of a sudden it showed up on there. And I was thinking at first it was like a like a mining company for like uh, metals and or rare earth materials and stuff. And then, but like I said, as I'm doing a little bit of research, uh, especially trying to find a, a picture to post along with the article, I was like, this is no, you know, mining, you know, like a normal mining. This is like, like there's solar panels and, you know, cooling mechanisms and things like that on there. It's like, this is a, a cryptocurrency mining. And so, you know, for, for mining, you know, they, they need, you know, energy, they need processor, computer power, and this and that. You know, I would assume this is probably a very highly profitable company. Uh, especially all, all they're doing is mining. They're not really, you know, doing much other than, than that. And so that's where we're seeing the company release has an 85% expecting earnings beat. So <clears throat> this holds the highest percentage uh, than any other earnings that are scheduled for this week and having a price move of 14%. That's that's really good in either either wow. direction you go, especially if you're if you plan on straddling. But but for buying it as shares, you know, this is probably a, a really growing company. If this is the first time we're seeing it on our top 10, it, it's most likely it's not going to be the last. And so, you know, every quarter, as we probably talk more about this particular stock now, uh, next quarter, it'll probably be $10. The next one from that will be five or, or, or 15 and, and, and so on. <clears throat> so let's, let's take a look at something else too, um, just for kicks and giggles. Uh, uh, oops, uh, let's do, um, what was it? Uh, let's do CNN forecast. Sometimes CNN will have a, uh, you know, their own anal uh, analysts and stuff that'll try to analyze certain things. We'll see how many analysts that they have. Uh, well, and that's if their website is glitching, which looks like it is. We may have to look into that, uh, tomorrow or later on this, uh, this evening. <clears throat> uh, yeah their whole website's a, a mess that's too bad so yeah so we'll look into that but at least yeah with that we can kind of see what their uh, analysis is is kind of uh, uh forecasting but also again with the nasdaq we can maybe look at option traders to see what they're doing so again follow the money 
Uh, let's see here. So we have calls and puts. So we have five, we have six, we have $7.50 call strike price. We have uh, some put strike prices, which are, which is right around the money. Because you said, yeah, right, right, five dollars. They're actually down seven and a half percent last Friday, which is a great buying opportunity. And so, uh, yes, yeah, so we just need to look to see which one some of these. So we have five dollars. So we have a six dollar call. Let's click on that. We'll see uh, its expiration date so that it expires uh, this Friday, March 18th. So it's saying, though, well, these investors that are betting, and this is a $14, uh, or no, no, uh, which one am I? This is a $6 strike price. That's uh, basically $7 per contract. So it's, it's a very inexpensive uh, option right now, uh, but it can easily double or triple with this, uh, with this, uh, with this earnings release. And so, but, the thing with Bitcoin as well, even if you're planning on buying this as a long term uh, <clears throat> investment, Bitcoin is always going to appreciate no matter what. Now, there's a time Bitcoin was a dollar. There's a time Bitcoin was 10 cents. However, the original creator of Bitcoin wanted to always ensure that it was always going to appreciate no matter what. But how do you get something that doesn't really exist and that's digital to appreciate like that? Similar to like gold or silver or, or diamonds, as you're digging underground for it, eventually it runs out. Then you have to find another mine or another hole in the ground to dig. Then you run out of that. So it's, it becomes harder and harder. And then it becomes harder to find. It's, there's less available. And so it, becomes, it appreciates, it becomes more valuable. But how do you do that with something like this? So the creator of Bitcoin decided to create an event called Bitcoin Having that takes place every four years. So Bitcoin Having, what, what happens is they, re, they subtract Bitcoin out of the system, but leaving the dollar amount there. So if there's less and less Bitcoin out of the, out of the pot, it becomes more valuable naturally, whether there's volume there or not. So, so far there's been three Bitcoin halving events. The first one uh, took place in, um, uh, what, 2012. And, uh, and, and so they subtract Bitcoin out of that, went from like a dollar to, they finally reached a hundred dollars. And people went nuts. Oh, it's a hundred dollars. Oh, that's so high. It's gonna plunge. Oh my gosh, it's a hundred dollars. A lot of people got rich. And then it started to trickle down and blah, blah, blah. And then another four years go by in, in, in uh, 2016, another Bitcoin uh, halving event took place. And all of a sudden it goes from $100 and $1,000 and then it touched sixteen dollars to $17,000, record breaking highs again. Then, then throughout the, the next couple of years, it started to plunge and, and then it went down. To, it, I saw it touch $3,000, but it fluctuated between nine ten thousand dollars it stayed around there until the next bitcoin having took a, a, a effect in may of 2020 well then all of a sudden bitcoin and it doesn't take the reaction doesn't happen instantly it usually takes place about six months after the the bitcoin having takes place so towards the end of 2020 all of a sudden we saw bitcoin reach it's 16, 17,000 dollar range, and then it just blew from there. It went from 20,000, 30,000, 40, 60, 70,000, and it just so now that 60, 70,000 is the new 16, 17,000 high mark. So now it's it's mellowed out. It's 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 gapped down. It's right around that 39, 40,000 dollar price range. And it's, that's its little comfort zone. You know, if it goes any lower than that, it'll bounce back up in its comfort zone. If it bounces any higher than that, it'll, it'll fall back down its little comfort zone. Uh, but it's inevitable that Bitcoin will, will reach $1 million of, per coin. It's not a matter of if, but when. And I predict that it could be 15 years, 17 years, more or less. It, it, it's gonna happen. And the more Bitcoin miner companies that we have, the more profitable that they're going to get because you know these uh, they'll, they'll be more valuable. But again, as the more Bitcoin mining or the more 
havings that we that we that take place um, they may not be profiting as much so there will be a time where you may have to to get rid of it if you're holding because um, they'll need more mines to to become more profitable but right now <clears throat> for the next <clears throat> uh, probably what 10 years uh, you know, this, this, this should be a pretty good stock. And that's why I was hoping that we can see a forecast, but we'll have to look at it later. <clears throat> Hopefully that makes sense. Anybody else have any other questions or wanted to go over anything? If you don't have any questions, um, I am going to assume everything makes sense. Everything uh, that but if you have if you ever have any questions i'm available 24 7 you can always message me on facebook messenger or we can always chat in our chat room uh live in our uh in our group <clears throat> well um looks like everything makes sense so we will uh go ahead and, and uh we'll close this this meeting it is recorded again. I will upload this to our YouTube channel and I will post it in our chat room and our group for your reference. That way you can always watch it again later today or throughout the week or at the end of the week for your reference. Thank you guys very much. Make good choices, uh, you know, good luck, and uh, let's make lots of money. Guys, have a good weekend. We'll, we'll see you soon.